Yeah, maybe whatever. a spot might be yeah, whatever, yeah. Shallow, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got being paid? Yes. The idea of it's a movie is that uh, uh, looking at your life is in that it's a movie and you're watching it, you know, from uh, from an outside view, and the problems that it presents, you know, whether you're in control of it sometimes or or not. Yeah. Nash does. He's a pretty oh, good yeah. piano yeah. player. Anyway, I, I, I don't play unless I get the big bucks. I can't show him what okay. I can do. I predominantly wanted to work with a musician on this record, like not so much just a producer, but someone who's played themselves. I really wanted to work at someone's house rather than in a commercial studio. This is the room, man. I sleep there. <laughs> it's not as good, it's not far to go to work. So at the end of the day, you kind of push the guitars and everything to the side, and I fold out the yeah, futon and sit there, and then fold that up the next morning. Yeah, this is about as rock and roll as it gets. Yeah, for me. I don't know. For me, I just sort of like hanging in the studio and working out most of the arrangements and stuff in there, because you can sort of just them down and record them straight away as you sort of like them or hate them or whatever they may be. What attracted me to that, to work with Nash was the fact that um, he's quite um, simple in his approach, you know, he'll, um, he'll find and try and find what's really important in, in a particular song and, and, um, and put all those elements in it and make the most of those and, and then kind of be done with it, you know, whereas I'm very prone to overthinking. And I mean, the main thing I try to do is get the sound of the artist because uh, I figure if, if, if the sound of the artist doesn't come through, well, then I've failed in my job. You know, a lot of producers in the world that sort of, you know, they're more the sound of the album than the, perhaps the artist is. For me, the philosophy was uh, try and get both of our styles across on the record because I really wanted to get that... Uh, what I thought he could offer on the record. I really wanted that kind of stripped back kind of approach. Rented rooms and borrowed cars. And then uh, Life on Mars, another track on the record. We've got a string arrangement done up for that and uh, that Daniel Denham did for me. And we're going to go down to Paradise and get a little quartet string section and, and do that. And that'll, that'll be kind of cool, I think. It'll be a nice flavour on the record. It's the best time recording. It's great sitting back and listening to the strings yeah. on your tracks. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So I've been kind of looking forward to today for a while. It's, it's part of the whole recording process. This should be one of the most enjoyable. Every time I make a record or every time I've done something, I always think um, uh, there's always a point when I think it's the greatest thing I've done and then it comes a point when uh, you know, you're not that proud of it at all and you always think there's something better to come. So uh, I'm, you know, I've already written a bunch of songs for the next record and I just want to keep doing it, you know, I just want to keep making records and improving, um, uh, especially as a recording artist, I just think there's a lot, a lot to learn and a lot to keep going on uh, and thematically what I've said lyrically so far you know it's, it's kind of chapter one in the book this record you know it's um, scratching the surface really so I'm quite interested to uh, just keep moving and keep uh, documenting your life and putting it on record you know at the end of the day and when it's all done it's you know it's just got to sound like a shame because the record